This video is brought to you by Straight Goods News, Canada's alternative online news source. Visit straightgoods.ca. Thank you. For, for whom does the bell toll? My name is Jeff Hutchings. I'm a professor of biology at Dalhousie University in Halifax, and I am president of the Canadian Society for Ecology and Evolution. The federal government has weakened national fisheries and environmental legislation, trivialized the relevance of scientific advice, and eliminated government scientific research of fundamental importance to the health of Canadians. Why has the government taken these actions? Well, the Minister of Fisheries and Oceans provides one clue. In June, he wrote that the Fisheries Act offered few tools to authorize pollution, but that the new legislation would establish new tools to authorize deposits of deleterious substances. In other words, changes to the Fisheries Act will make it easier to authorize the pollution of Canada's waters. Now, what can go wrong when a country prioritizes economic development at any cost and devalues science at the same time? Okay. Canada provides a stellar example. The collapse of Newfoundland's Atlantic cod fishery occurred 20 years ago this month. Oh this God. was the greatest loss of a vertebrate species in Canadian history and resulted in Canada's biggest single job loss. When will history repeat itself? Now, freedom of expression is no longer a right enjoyed by Canadian government scientists. These individuals paid by taxpayers to undertake research in support of society are not permitted to speak to Canadians unless they receive ministerial permission to do so. When you inhibit the communication of science, you inhibit science. When you inhibit science, you inhibit the acquisition of knowledge. Government control over the ability of society to acquire knowledge has alar alarming precedence. An iron curtain is being drawn by government between science and society. Closed curtains, especially those made of iron, make for very dark rooms. In closing, a former Scandinavian politician with impeccable international credentials provides an informed and enlightened perspective on science and politics. These are the words of Gru Harlem Brundtland, who served three terms as Prime Minister of Norway, and she said, science must underpin our policies. If we compromise on scientific facts and evidence, repairing nature will be enormously costly, if possible at all. Politics that disregard science and knowledge will not stand the test of time. I'm here to speak for the children, although I don't I think you need any expertise in general to, to perceive the fact that, it, for example, Bill C-31, which allows refugees, including children, to be incarcerated for a year without any right to appeal, is bad for the children. Uh, Bill C-31 would also allow separation of a refugee from uh, their spouse, their, their parents, or their offspring, also bad for the children. And finally, and most famously, the withdrawal of medical benefits, uh, benefits for this vulnerable demographic. Bad for the children, terrible health economy. Let's wait for chronic treatable disorders to turn into acute, expensive, untreatable ones. And then if one looks, if one moves on to uh, incarceration, uh, this at a time when Canada's crime rate is at an all-time low over the last 40 years, because of Bill C-10, we are incarcerating, and this is the Canadian Bar Association speaking, representing 30, 37,000 jurists across Canada, we're sending young people to jail more often and longer than we'd have previously. Hey. So, and then be because of Bill C-10, the introduction of mandatory sentencing over the express protests of those in America who've tried this for the last 20 years and seen it fail means that for comparatively minor nonviolent crimes, mothers and fathers are going to be separated from their children with mandatory sentencing. It's Bad for the children. 
Okay, the, uh, the long form census uh, we, uh, that we'll just touch briefly, those that drop from sight are those on the margins of society. Uh, the ill, the chronically ill, the impoverished, uh, those uh, uh, with drug dependency issues, and all their children, gone, disappeared to the social agencies because of this uh, Uniform Act. And finally, from an environmental, uh, uh, it costs an enormous amount of money. And finally, from the environmental health point of view, since the year 2000, we've agreed that this is anthropogenic uh, uh, warming that is is causing this this problem for the last five years Canada has won the fossil a year award at the UN convention we have owned the podium sadly in the way that our Olympians can only dream of so with the greatest crisis facing humanity Canada is dead last among developed countries uh, uh, in looking after this problem a problem that caused 150,000 deaths in the year 2000 in relation to, to climate change events most of them children I, I find this morally egregious bad for the children What's and shameful like you thank you very much my name is Ben Paulus. I work with a group called the Indigenous Environmental Network. Now, I've had the dubious honor of being at the last five climate change negotiations, as well as the Real Earth Summit last month in Brazil. And I can not proudly report that Canada, our government, has been present at these international negotiations, as well as here in Canada, putting our lives and the planet at risk. Our government has been ignoring scientists as well as First Nations peoples across Canada who have first-hand knowledge about climate change impacts and sustainable lifestyles. Our people's traditional knowledge across the country is being ignored, by, of course, by the government. Right now there are massive protests across Nunavut and the other territories about food security. Just as recently as last month, however, our own Minister of Health declared that there was no problem for indigenous peoples in Canada, saying that our peoples hunted every day and therefore had access to all the food that they could possibly want. Yay! This came after the United Nations actually came to Canada and visited native communities and declared that there was actually a food crisis going on in our country. What we have to understand is that this government is not just interested in denying science, is not just interested in denying human rights, or reality. Money versus people. They're working to pursue economic colonialism at the expense of First Nations and all Canadians. Us. This is incredibly clear in their push to expand the tar sands and the pipelines out west by sidelining First Nations voices and interests to ensure these projects continue at the expense of our cultures and our climate. But that is why, that is why we here today are so powerful as we stand together and as we join in with lawyers, with doctors last month that stood up against the Refugee Act and with citizens everywhere standing up for democracy. Because we must work together to overcome this government for the sake of First Nations, for all Canadians, for generations yet to come and for all species on this planet.